Hello, Paul. Hello, Chris. Hello. We're here. Uh, well, uh, because uh, Paul had uh, raised certain questions regarding the reading of the second cave that I had proposed. So, Paul, yours is the floor. Well, and everything that's in it. <laughs> um, um, to, to me, it comes back to this business of um, the Jerusalem Athens tension, yes. which which um, still mysteriously to me, um, you seem to um, reduce, let's say. And on, on the basis, I guess, of Vico, but I don't really get that. Okay. Well, first of all, the basis for whatever I said was not anybody in particular. Um, if, if, if I should mention Vico, I, uh, I would mention him as somebody who is... No, no I, didn't uh, say you, I didn't say you mentioned him. It's just the impression I have. That's all right. Um, well, just because I re referred to him. Um, but if I do, and well, when, I if and when I do that, mention... I it's just an impression I have, but you know, oh, I, yeah. I don't well, what would give you that impression? Um, what gave me that impression? Um, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> okay, well, that's doesn't sound very well grounded, but anyway, um, so, um Reduction of the tension between uh, Jerusalem and Athens. Uh, we have spoken about this a bit, and uh, it uh, pretty much looks like the traditional century-old uh, discussions on Jerusalem and Athens, discussions that uh, go back to um, virtually to the beginning, in fact, I would say to the beginning of Christianity, are in fact coeval with Christianity and emerge precisely um, given the Christian, what we call the Christian at this point, uh, yeah? Uh, there are, um, the, well, the, the Christian. Yeah. articulation of these two poles yes chris well i don't mean to interrupt but i just thought it might be helpful to right. um to re-raise um a couple of key issues in your last discussion that i listened to um namely the question of omnipotence modern and pre-modern as well as you know um the poesis the, the of of saint paul's epistles as as guiding the gospels and how i mean that's just sort of just to recap you guys were kind of firing back and forth about those two issues and then at the very tail end this notion this issue of time came up paul had said sort of not to any great essential import just he had, just, he had said the phrase in time which kind of tr triggered a response from you um saying that that was a, a very modern way of talking which i immediately agreed with and then i i wrote a couple of different takes on on why that might be the case um and for my own part i see things more in line with you mark as far as i understand what you're trying to say um and you know in broad strokes say getting back to some kind of proper relationship between philosophy and christianity or philosophy and theology um but but that that basic more overarching issue involving weeding the garden as it were of all these modern uh accessories these modern barnacles these, these things which 
which inhibit our ability as people living in the modern era from appreciating um, the core foundational truths of religion and or philosophy, um, right? Um, uh, in the way that they would have been understood, say, at the time, or in the way they ought to be understood in light of modernity, um, had we the wherewithal to uh, and the fortitude to face these issues with the, the, the pugnacious quality we ought to have as as good medievals or good people who who who, who shed who throw off the modern shackle the modern mind shackles, right? Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. You know, I. It, it's not that I disagree. Are those hells? Is that hell's fire behind you, burning? Well, it's, it's the hearth fire anyway. <laughs> is this a little demon or a little lovey? Oh man, those things got nine lives. I don't know where they get those from. Well, if I if each one has nine lives, that's a lot of lives around here. <laughs> yeah, long way to go. So, um, Paul, do, 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 do you have objections? Any objection or, or uh, well, arrow or spear to cast? Well, I, um, <laughs> I, what? I'm sorry, I'm not too. Um, all right, what about, now let, let me try to tie these two points together. On the one hand, the, the tension between uh, the two poles, Jerusalem and Athens, what do they stand for uh, throughout the centuries? It's a quite, um, at least on the face of things, quite simple distinction that we have here. Two pillars, we find them in Michelangelo's uh, final judgment, right? We have the two uh, right in, and they're in paradise, or well, um, in the heavens anyway, okay? And we find them, one on the left, one on the right. One is the cross, one is the, the pillar. One is the pagans, one is the Bible. And what, what painting is that? What? What painting is that? The final judgment. Oh. There's a pillar and a cross. Yeah. All right. Um, column, column of classical antiquity. But now, um, and th that incidentally, as I have remarked in the past, although I haven't produced any uh, full-fledged video on this, uh, th that, um, shall we say, this, that painting is a summary of Dante's comedy visual summary. Now, uh, and of course, Michelangelo was a student of Dante. Now, um, let us not be fooled by the images, the names, Jerusalem, Athens, eh, reason and authority. Reason and authority. There is no reason without authority. There is no authority without reason. However, the modern attempt to conflate the two, or rather the attempt to conflate the two that we, in that attempt being what we call modernity or the modern impulse, is an exercise in futility, at best, an absurd monster at worst. Strauss is responding to that attempt to conflate the two, right? to, and to create a new boundary for human life, right? a new cave. This was the image, but he has other images, and we can come up with other images. We're poets by nature. And this new horizon, shall we say, this new, this new cave, obscures the nature of the two poles, obscures the truth about our condition as human beings. 
Where do we find authority? Where do we find reason? Is there any genuine reason outside of authority? Is there any true authority aside from reason? In other words, an absurd authority. Hence also the problem of natural right. Natural right had to go out of the window for the moderns. Natural right understood with the classics. A new natural right, an imposter was set up, which is essentially brute force. Why did it have to go out of the window? Well, precisely because reason was conceived autonomously of traditional moral authority and authority was conceived autonomously of reason. You cannot investigate the foundations of philosophy. You cannot, in, you know, uh, the, the, you know the, the, the foundation of, of the law uh, were out of the question. So both terms are obscured. Authority that has reason at its heart and reason that has authority at its heart. Um, reason that has authority at its, at its heart tells us that prior to appearing outwardly, authority is ingrained, as it were, in the human being. In other words, there is a principle of order in the human being. We recognize law as good insofar as it, it harmonizes with that principle of authority that is inherent in the human being. And that's why we speak about the difference between positive right, the law, and natural right being something that is not, yeah, it's not a limit that is without us, you know, outside of us or above us, imposed upon us. If you have a, 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 a law that is imposed upon us it, that does not make any sense, that it's severed um, from, from the are, are principle you, so, order in nature, then we call that tyranny. Yes, Chris. Um, when you're talking about reason and authority, do you, just, you mean the reason for an authority, or do you actually mean the operations of authority upon you know, a given set of people? Be that in a, in a uh, government type of setting, a statecraft setting, or a corporate setting, or family setting. I mean, it just occurs to me that there are many scales um, to examine the question of, of authority. Now, you know, it's most obvious to talk about state authority or um, authority at, at that level, but, but in some ways there are there are connections, at least loose connections, between all forms of authority. That you know, to be the owner of a company, you have you have to have sanction from the government to own the property. You know, to, to be the owner of a household, um, that that too is in, in some way tied to uh, filling out in, in a looser, non non codified sense um, one's obligations um, in the vocation of of father, say. Um, um, that, yeah, all that all them, kinds of authority, yeah. external authority. So it could be the the schoolmaster, it could be the, the priest, it could be yeah. uh, the you know the boss at work, the government. Sure. I mean, I, I bring it back to the family because that is the most clear form of natural authority the, that exists. The, the father, the father, the, fa the father. You know, and there's a very clear reason behind that that authority because he. So seed that became children, he has, and he has a filial, you know, there's an obligation, a filial obligation you find in the fifth commandment, um, right, based on, but what, you know, but what exactly is that, that reason? And as, you know, as many people know, the, you know, the, the rate of single motherhood and, uh, is through the roof in the modern day, and that, that ties in in important ways, I think. 
to the other machinations of authority in a more business-like setting. Yeah. Um, well, that, that the destruction, the demolition of the, the eradication of the traditional family uh, is a sign, a sign that um, of a machinery that uh, is set up to uh, well, is is it a is it a sign? I mean, is it, is it an effect or is it a cause? Or no, it it, it, it's in the effect. The destruction of the family is the is the result of the workings of a modern machinery. Uh, I I don't I don't disagree. Yet at the same time, aren't there facets of um, of it to go the other way around? That that there is something about people being raised in a dislocated way. Yes. That um, that feeds into right that, that makes people better worker ants in a in a corporatized setting. The, the so, way we are trained, more than not educated, but raised in the sense of training, the way we are trained it is not accidental. That is part of the machinery. The machinery that is that that works to to obscure entirely any kind of harmony between. Mm -hmm. Uh, reason, and authority, reason or nature and authority, if you like, human nature and authority. So all sure. authority becomes bad, all traditional authority. Um, sure, sure. But the answer can't be, I mean, the answer is complex to solve. I mean, because there are a lot of well-meaning, you know, conservative types who foster good things. I can't hear you well, Chris. Oh, I'm just saying that there, there are, of course, you know, conservative elements that that seek to foster good families and such activities are, are good. Of course, they're good. Um, yeah, but, but, um, you see, the but are they sufficient? Most, I'm sorry, the problem with most appe conservative appeals to authority is that they scramble to recover um, some prepackaged model of authority uh, right. instead of working to reestablish an original uh, bond between the outward forms right. of authority and human nature. Right, right. I, I follow entirely. I that, that's the um, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Um, and and uh, why the why is the father out of the window immediately? But you know why is the the father figure destroyed? Whether it's through Marx, Freud, or, or Darwin, you 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 just name it. Uh, well, because the father is the uh, archetypal. Uh, image, yes, of this bond between authority and nature. He is your father by nature and is your authority by nature. And he's reminding you, you know, of, that you cannot sever the two, authority and nature. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just thinking, of, uh, you know, e even in well-maintained families. I mean, well, you know, think about the, the you know the Jews and the Greeks uh, right and I mean the the family formations there and in pre modern societies leading to a kind of war a, a perpetual state of war in a way uh, that that families with one another have always kind of been in a state of strife you could say that's um, the human condition so, the corrupt condition of man corrupt condition of man and so. On the one hand, restoring families. On the other hand, not making an, an idol, not making a cult out of the family. Oh, yeah. Sucks, yeah, of course. Right? They're a problem. They're a problem. But now the question is, do you, when you're faced with a problem, are we going to go Stalinist? Or <laughs> get rid of the family? Are we going to get rid of the problem? This way we end up saying with, with the good old, uh, old um, uh, Joseph, uh, that uh, since nobody's complaining, that must mean there's no problem. Sure, makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> well, yeah. So how do you deal with that problem? Uh, the problem of the family? How do you deal with it? And, and thus, what I have appealed to in terms of poetry, in other words, a logos that mediates, that moderates, that um, uh, soothes, we've lost um, uh, Chris's uh, image there. Uh, 
uh, Paul. But um, he might have a problem with his connection. But yeah. yeah. So so that is really what is I think what is at stake in when we talk about Athens and Jerusalem. It is not so much a question of, of you know per se uh, Bible by the Bible represents something in this discourse. Um, or against the philosophers, Athens represents uh, that pole of reason. Obviously, there is authority in Athens. Obviously, the philosopher is dealing with authority. Now, does that mean we could just just change the names, however? N not quite. And, and the reason is that um, there's no better name for authority than the Bible, since the Bible um, is the best uh, you know, sh shall we say, uh, incarnates the is the best form of authority, pure authority, that we know of. It is an authority that, why? Because it's, it's an authority that is uh, pretty, um, can I say, uh, yeah. clean. <laughs> um, you, you don't have these, these ridiculous uh, gods that you end up in the course of um, Greek, uh, the, the centuries of Greek um, civilization. Hello, Chris, we're back. I was saying that um, that it, it's worthwhile representing the pole of authority by appealing to the Bible, to Jerusalem, since the Bible is, is, a, is the best model of authority that we can come up with. In Strauss's terms, um, the Hebrew religion was the most rational religion, okay? which doesn't mean that it is reduced to, to human reason. Yeah. So um, there you have it. Um, uh, it, it. To speak about Jerusalem and Athens it, it can be more productive for us if we're trying to figure things out than to speak about um, Socrates versus um, his Athenian authorities. Well, those are tyrannical. Uh, the Bible is not. So that, that the Bible represents authority um, in, in more cl clearly, in more um, in a more positive way. It's a challenge for philosophy. Well, <clears throat> what what I thought of as you were talking was um, God's demand to. Uh, to Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, and that doesn't, you know, that that's um, that doesn't that doesn't fit in with um, with what? The, the, well, with, with the the rather neat explanation that you gave of how these things dovetail. Okay, well, I don't know if it's neat or not, but it it, um, it certainly need not be viewed as um, an instance of uh, irrationality, uh, at least in the eyes of philosophy. In other words, for, when philosophy looks at, at the story of, of Abraham, it need not bow <laughs> to or to, to an you know, before this vision of Authority beyond all reason, inexplicable. There are various well, readings of that story throughout the Talmud. Uh, you know, you have uh, the whole tradition of interpretation of that. Now, how, how philosophical, how rational, how can, can, do we want, can we get in interpreting it? How should we go about in approaching that story? Should we try to reduce it to, in, to a box? Uh, where everything is solved, or should we rather, I mean, clearly that not, would, would not be a Socratic uh, approach, yeah? or should we not rather um, uh, approach it phenomenologically? And, um, well, I, I, I don't trying see to how discover, you... Trying to discover meaning 
where there isn't any apparent. Okay. No, I, I don't. No, I don't see how. Now that can be done. That's been done well, throughout I mean, the centuries. You can, you, can, you, can, you can you can always you can always rationalize something, but. No, but what does it mean it to rationalize? Do you think Socrates is rationalizing? No, I'm talking about us. Never mind it, it, us. It, it, well, we're talking, well, I, talking about the possibilities. As I said, well, it, you can throw it in a box, uh, you know, and, and take a modernist position. Um, and and um, Well, I don't know if I'm throwing all... anything in a, in a box or taking a modernist position, but when I, I see God right. asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, that's something that that nobody can understand. And what what it turns out is that it's about Abraham being obedient. No, I, I you know, I, I don't, yeah, but I don't, I think that's reduction, reduction, reductionist. That's a reduction. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a very simple reading of the thing. Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a very superficial reading. Well, okay, Marco, but you know, if you're just gonna disqualify what I say is superficial, it, it's yeah. I mean, maybe it's superficial, but there's no way. And it closes can... the doors to to um, to uh, Socratism. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, I mean, that to the that whole Talmudic be... tradition, by the way, Paul. Oh. You can, you know, no tal no serious Talmudist will approach the story that way and say, ah, what, what way? are you going to do? What way? what way am I approaching it? Well, by saying precisely what you said. What did I say? Well, it's very simple. The guy, there is some, there's something that is beyond our comprehension. Nobody can understand. How, you know. how is Abraham to understand, to understand this thing? The, 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 the understanding of the story comes because of Abraham's obedience. Obedience to something that What do you mean humanly, the understanding of the story comes from obedience? I don't understand that. Well, part. yeah, because, because Abraham is obedient to God and God uh, ch changes the situation and Isaac is saved. And, and uh, that's it was a sketch. It, that's the a sketch. story, the interpretation yeah. of the story is the obedience of Abraham. What was in, that in, face of what did you just in face of something that he can't possibly understand, I mean that, that doesn't seem so uh, so flat-footedly stupid to me. I mean th th that's uh, well, it's just a proposition. But if what you're up to is um, settling matters and saying, okay, we just cannot understand it because we well, are we, like under, we, we can under we can understand it in the sense that Abraham. Of the, that God is testing Abraham's fidelity, and He's testing His fidelity by asking, asking of Him something that He cannot possibly understand. Something that is, you know, absolutely incredible. That's gone against everything. You know, He's He's promised to become a nation. Isaac is the is the conduit to this nation, and He's His son. This is an impossible son, and now God is asking Him to to sacrifice it. So, from a human point of view, it's incomprehensible. And then it turns out that what we can comprehend about it is that Abraham is obedient to God. And I think there so is more to be, I, I think that there is more to to the lesson than that. Well, maybe, but that that's that that I mean, okay. What, it's something what, that look that is something that you can that that, that you can um, uh, you can think about. Um, it is a lesson that you, that comes to to mind. Well, I'm not trying to reduce it to a little nothing. I mean, it seems to me that what okay. I described is something you could think about an awful lot. Yeah. You know, even though it can be, I mean, the story only takes a few lines in the Bible. It's it's not like uh, you know, it's not like I have to talk about it for an hour in order to to, to show. I mean, maybe one could, but you know, it's a it's a short little story, and that basically is a purport of the story. But I don't yeah. see how you can how you can. Um, but, I mean, you know, well, you well, I, is that, you know it is, it, yeah, that doesn't go very far, but you tell me. All right, so, so, so take it farther, take it farther. Uh, that, no, I mean, you, you, the, two lines. The first word of, uh, of, uh, of the Bible 
is um, has been discussed uh, throughout the centuries, and there have been. All right, take it farther, Marco. Volumes I mean, it, on it's, that. It's, it's, I mean, I, I'm willing to learn something, Marco. But you know, uh, tell me, tell me. No, no, I'm me. not here to give a lecture on on the story of Abraham. All I'm we're speaking about the approach to the story, and the the idea is you have okay, you have a stereotypical notion of the approach that, that we should take. Um, Who has a stereotypical idea? No, there is in the air, we are familiar with. So there's this uh, notion that we should approach it rationally up to a point, and then there's a limit of reason. And from there on, we accept that reason cannot go beyond that. And so that's faith. You take it on faith. Speak, speak, speak for yourself. I mean, that. that uh, no, I don't speak for myself. I speak for the no, whole. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't speak. 2,000 years doesn't, of people no, have been saying this. That, okay, but that doesn't speak to me at all. I mean, well, that's, you know, that, there, there are I'm things. completely ignorant of the whole 2,000 years there, of Christianity. There, 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 because for 2,000 years, Christi Christians have been speaking about that. You get okay, up to a certain Marco, point with okay, reason. But there are a lot of things. I mean, our, 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 our understanding, our human understanding has limits. Yeah, okay. And we can, we, can, well, we can push at them, but that's just a fact. Our human understanding, just like our. Uh, yes, our what is the nature of those limits? limits? What? What is the nature? What do those limits depend upon? Well, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the, the character of other aspects of existence. What does that mean? Well, I don't know. There, we have certain powers, you know, uh, uh, there, there's physical aspects to our life, you know, our. our, our, our our, our muscular strength that there are uh, there are our, our various mental capacities our various uh, sensory capacities and uh, I mean you know there's there, there's all there's all sorts of things that, that go on in life that that, that that don't have only to do with with um, with with our thinking I mean, think, thinking doesn't resume, doesn't resume, uh, you know, doesn't resume everything. I don't understand how, how this answers the question. Let me rephrase it. Um, how do you understand the limits of reason? Because there are realms that aren't concerned by reason. Ah, uh, what are those realms that are not? We're talking there are about. Realms of we're talking about, for example, for the, the, the Bible, right? You're trying to figure out, okay, what is the meaning that God's meaning, you know, the message, that what is um, the meaning of the stories? Okay, they're written. Well, it's, 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 not as, it's not as if the Jerusalem aspect of the thing has nothing to do with reason. It, it, it's it's that, that, that we are human beings. What? Yes, of course, of course. So you know we nobody are would being, say that they're we, completely cut off. You know, we, 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 we know that would come close to it. We we have the powers that we have. We're constituted the way we're constituted, and there are people can be oriented in different ways. So, Paul, how are we to understand the limits of reason? Are they inherent or external to reason? Well, both is, is our reason inherently uh, flawed, or is it no, I mean, flawed it's, from it's, outside? It's, it's it's limited. It's limited, and it, it it doesn't apply to everything. Yeah. What are these limits? What are the limits of reason? Well, there's a lot of things we can't know. Yeah. A lot of things that we cannot know, for example. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The mind of God. What's that? <laughs> the, what's going on at the center of the earth? And yeah, you know, well, there, as soon as you specify something you can't know, you you've already given a way to approach knowing it. Well, you you can. There's there's Strauss's formulation, knowing something about what you don't know, but knowing something about what you don't know doesn't mean knowing it. It means, well, it, right, means but, but it means sensing. Explain. It means sensing the limits of, of what you know. Well, of what you yeah. know. So I can say that Stephen Hawking or somebody might know calculus or what have you, but 
but by simply but even by knowing that i don't know that it gives me as much as i would need to go no, we're, we're not we're not talking about us individually we're talking about intelligence as such and and so the the, the situation of an individual is uh look isn't is, it uh, paul isn't it a bit um pointless you're not you're, you're not you're not pretending that uh that um we're all knowing i mean you're talking about omniscience i don't know um, okay i mean if you want to say that i'm not i I'm don't not know i mean it, you know isn't it a bit pointless to ask what we can or cannot know if we have not yet asked what it is to know and who is the knower who the you know the, the knower is? Oh, I don't know. That, that that just seems. I mean, okay. It's That's not a, a marginal or irrelevant point. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if the, the question seems pretty straightforward. Are there limits ah, to what for you? Know? Not for I, me. It's, not it's for me. Not All right. For, me. for you, there's no limits. Okay. No. So you can know everything. No. All right. Well, I mean, correct. I'm not saying you don't, Marco. No, no. It is not straightforward for me. Well, all right. The question all right. is not so, straightforward. So, I mean, in, some kind of, in some kind of bent way, you can know everything. You know, good. Well, it's like how a bicycle can know the road the same as a car can know the road, but a, a car obviously goes much faster, can know more of the road, so to speak, than a bike well, or a pair of roller everything. skates. There's also the clouds. But, There's also th three miles sure. under the ground. There's also what's going on on Mars. I mean, yeah. You know, well, so well, I don't. I, I'm, I don't think it is to be pedantic. Yeah. But it seems to me that before asking what we can or cannot know, if we if we wish to proceed seriously, it behooves us to ask what we mean by knowing. Then and why what didn't you ask me. that? Why did, then why before asking me about the limits of knowledge didn't you ask that question? I mean, I'm just replying to your question. Go ahead, ask no, the question. No, I did not ask you. It, what we can know and what we cannot know. Well, you asked ask me about you, the... since you had raised the, the 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 problem of well the limitations of reason. At that point, I I raised the question: What? How do you understand the limitations of reason? If you assume that there are limitations to reason, how do you understand those limitations? Now, well, maybe maybe it would be helpful for me to. To, to point something out here. What would St. Thomas Aquinas answer to that question? What are the limitations of reason? He would answer, and let this be a suggestion, yeah? I don't have the text and the lines yeah, ready at hand. Well, um, I'm not in any position to contradict whatever you say about okay. what- Okay, all, all for the better, all for the best. Well, um, not really. He would say that the question is very strange. Why do you ask that question? What does it I mean? I didn't ask it. You no, asked. I know. I know. She would tell me. Yes. What do you mean by that? That is very strange. And the reason is very simple. Because the question is formulated in such a way as to obscure the distinction between human and, and divine reason. But then again, that distinction requires examination. Well, I mean- There are no the, limits to reason, aside the, the, from the, reason itself, for, for because reason is ultimately the perf divine reason, which well, is the perfection, right. I mean, of, I, which is the perfection I, of human reason. I, I assumed we were just talking about our own reason. Well, it's not that no, but yes and no. It's not that simple because, as we know, in you know, in in, in um, uh, Christianity, you you can. This is the whole point of Christianity, I believe, that you cannot speak about ultimately. You cannot speak about man without speaking about God, and you cannot speak about God without speaking about man. So that there is a kind of mystery, as it were, um, about both or a mysterious bond between the two. In other words, when applied to the specific uh, question of knowledge, or rather reason in this case we were saying, human reason is bound to divine reason. 
so that there is no such thing as my reason here, it gets up to there, and then there's divine reason that fills in the gap. Uh-uh, it does not work that way. Here is science that gives us the hows, the no hows, and then there. Theology, this is what you often hear, fills in the gap on top. It gives us meaning and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> to quote uh, that girl, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the, 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 um, is that Swedish girl? Well, even in knowing something that you already have knowledge of, you can always know something better. That right? proposition is is uh, intriguing, but then the the real question I return to, I repeat, you know, what do we mean by knowing? So first of well, all, investigation. So there's, there's, there's knowing in terms of sense knowledge, like you can you can see. You're giving um, me many kinds of knowledge, but this is not, I'm not trying to answer. I don't want you to answer this question, Chris. It, it's just, well, it's it just a matter of saying, well, you know, it's a big problem. It's sure. a big problem of and it, it, it deserves yeah. being investigated and its core. Yeah. TSD. What is that, which we're talking about before Socratically speaking, before looking at the yes, the different kinds of knowledge. Yes, but I want to know what knowledge is in itself. What do we mean by that? Then we're gonna ultimately we're gonna have to settle for a poetic account. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we're that, that's going to be a, a, a poetic a, account a of what knowledge stage. is. Hmm? So a, po a poetic account of what knowledge is has to suffice us. We cannot examine the question of knowledge as if it could be described more. But we can examine it further. We can investigate the matter well, yes. within the, yes, but, but, but that yes. frame. But, but it, within the frame of knowledge having a poetic basis and, and some, or how would you put it again? I mean, what does that, what does that mean? That, uh, you know, what does it we mean can investigate poetry? the matter. We can investigate the matter and perhaps we can come up with a formulation such as uh, and again, it's a provisional formulation because it's a put you know, it's, it's whatever, what other formulation can you have if not provisional with respect to, to thought? Um, you know, com uh, so we say knowledge, communion with the good. Okay, okay, that could be a possibility. Communion with the good. Hmm, let's investigate this further. You know, right. given right. that provisional formulation, because I mean, ultimately, what is it? What is this? Knowledge is scientia, episteme, knowledge of eternal things. We investigate, we study the ancients, we try to figure out what their arguments oh. were. Recollection, yeah. I mean, who is recollecting what? That's a beautiful metaphor, recollection. You know, we yeah. unpack, we investigate. Um, but we need we need intellectual balls for that moral balls yeah. because we don't want to uh, you know try to ass it, you know, assert something that that is a kind of end to thought. Um, yeah. It should be always a matter of coming up with formulations that are helping us think. Not right. smother. Not, 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 oh. Yeah, not, not putting a period, but some kind of a semicolon or comma. Invitations, invitations. An, an invitation, to question in, marks, yeah. Has to think. Yeah. Because right. ultimately it probably has to do with thinking, yes? I mean, what yeah, does so, it? Well, yeah, so at any, you know, single phrase uh, explanation of what knowledge is, is, is going to be, is always going to be elliptical to some extent. There's always going to be, um, I mean, who can put the final nail in the coffin of, of such a quandary? Not that you can't approach it poetically, like, you know. Um, yes, there could be some good formulations, I think, within the context of a community, of a language. Yes, yeah. there could be some pretty decent formulation that makes sense, defensible, yeah. and, and that help right. us think, that help us think. Whatever we come up with should help us think. Right, right, yes. I, I agreed. Um, yeah, when it comes to reason, you say, well, what are the limitations of reason? Well, how do we understand those limitations? Well, yeah. 
are they inherent in reason? In other words, is our reason, is there something wrong with our reason that it, it does not allow us to uh, engage in a, you know, this itineranium, uh, yeah? Uh, this this journey of of um, of the mind in God uh, to um, render the the Saint Bonaventure's um, title, or is our reason limited accidentally? Right by the like body. By the, by the body, yeah. Yeah. Or, our yeah. physical, you know, there, there's somebody beating me over the uh, the head with a hammer. And is a lot of distress. Yeah, or the passions, which also find their root in the body. Uh, the passions, uh, yes, of course, yes. That's what I, uh, this entails. So the fact that we are right. fallen into this uh, world of physicality uh, puts constraints on our capacity to, to reason. But yeah. that would not tell us that there is a problem or a limit that is inherent to our reason. It's not a problem about our reason. It's a problem about our passions getting in the way and our being still bound to them. Yeah. So what would the, the point of poetry be for one thing? Oh, moderate the passions and allow um, reason to exercise its work without being limited by external factors. If there is a, the only limit that reason really knows is internal to it. By that, I don't mean that it's, it's uh, that reason is, is um, imperfect. I mean that it's, it's the perfection of reason. That's the only internal limit of reason. Its own perfection, which yeah. is divine. And which, yeah, is infinite, really. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, keep on going reasoning well to know that. i mean to reasoning about uh, reason for instance trying to figure out yeah, what it means it. to reason right and as, and as soon as you come up with a novel formulation then you that opens up more questions like a like a fruiting branch i mean well you know yeah you know, or maybe not so fruiting sometimes but it, it, nevertheless it's, a branch. it's not it's clearly not everything goes but you you realize even on a, on a very uh, very very easily the reason has to ratio Okay, ratio, which is by the way, logos, so it's not something other than language, really. Yeah, um, ratio is also in the, for the ancient Latin is a kind of um, uh, weighing, weighing of things, you know, comparing. So it has to deal with choosing, yeah, which one is more and which one is less. So it has to do with also f discovering order. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it has this um, kind of uh, a very. Um, political if you like a dimension reason sure, it, sure. It, it is it is tied to the problem of justice what is fair and and, yeah, and also to the, the the problem of sophistry all right well Russia? abuses of, like of sophistry being an abuse of reason you could say um that that this uh, this ordering faculty is you know intended for good for chat but but for the perfection of reason, really. use, I mean, in, in modern legal jargon, you know, legal systems can be erected through a kind of logos, but it's not the divine logos. It's um, it's a it's a misapplication of reason to over convoluting that which is more simple. Right. You're, you're speaking about uh, sophistry here. Sophist well, yeah. So sophistry as as distinct from justice or related to justice and to all of those. Well, so, sophistry, you know, in, in the sophistry, in Plato, sophistry, so we have this web, right? The sophistry is, is this kind of spider who is spinning yeah. a web and trapping people in it. Um, yeah. That, that's the, 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 this um, closure to the perfection of reason instead right. of openness to it. Yeah, right. There, there's always a, that, that sophistic element whenever you limit reason. Um, yeah, whenever, whenever you limit reason, basically. Yeah. Um, Who is limiting it, really? Yeah. It, you could say, well, it's reason being used to limit reason. Reason to, yeah, to, to cripple itself. Yeah. Well, reason might, like, temporarily impede itself for a purpose so that, a, you know, a single track of thought, for instance, can be examined on its own to better perfect, perfect that track of thought. 
um, to discuss a, a set of particular items of particular intrigue for a particular purpose. Okay, but then but, that, that is in the context but, of an openness. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying is that, but reason might provisionally limit its own operations for distinct reasons. And, well, I don't know. I'm just... you, give an, you, know, you give an example, and that is precisely what you're saying. When I'm yeah. speaking to my children, I give an example. I'm not going to go on in, in this uh, tour de force uh, and uh, you know, getting to the to the core of things, you have to you know, smooth, give it a little honey. Yeah. Well, so and all operations of reason eventually end in the poetic. Um, if there's know, an end, and end in, in a more poetic, you know, which is antithetical to the way we usually think about in the modern era. We think of poetry as being this operation of passion this we have a rom very romanticized notion that all operations of reason end when they're pursued to their utmost and end in the poetic um in that we well, have to breathe well yeah you have to breathe yeah so yeah i suppose if you didn't have to if you never had to stop somewhere simply to to catch your breath to take a break if, and if you you know you had no concern for the gestalt of a certain dialogue taking pro its proper shape or something like that and ending on a on a uh, flourishing note then you wouldn't necessarily had to have to go into the poetic but but insofar as one must wrap up a sentence one must wrap up a paragraph a sentence can't go on forever a paragraph can't go on forever a book cannot go on forever and so if, as far as these things have to be be concluded you, you know one must this this suggests that there are two ends to to the human being. Yes. How so? We have two ends to the human being. Yes. Here is Paul that is joining us again. Paul, hi there. Um, well, I, I, either there are two ends or there there are many ends to the human being. I mean, two, two ends in, in, to speak in medieval terms. Yeah. Which is not, to, you know, something other than what the the earlier classics tell us, but it, it is a they make a, you know, clear they give us a clear formulation. Um, and, and what are the two ends? Well, um, with respect to reason, uh, we know we, we could say that the ultimate end of reason, the divine end, is divine perfection. Um, but that alone will, would not help us uh, live as, as men, because you're yeah. obviously having to deal with all kinds of problems. And, yeah. uh, so then there is a, a human end of reason, which yeah. does not, here we go, I, I have lost you here, there we go, um, which is not that perfection, but if reason is seeking out order it is not the divine order that is being sought in this case hmm. but it is a human order that is being sought what we call yeah. a moral a moral political order that is being sought as human beings we have that in that is proper to us as human beings, the constitution of a world, a human order. Uh, yeah. That human order has no um, sense, no meaning, and no justice if it is not constituted and lived in the light of a divine order. Yes, that that is the yeah. medieval, I yes. suppose, or the classical in general answer. Uh, there, so that we have two ends: the human end, which is the political end, but that yeah. end is so, to to be right. So, but but what does what does that mean for it to what does it mean for it to be constituted um, and lived in light of you know? Because people can compartmentalize, you know, they they might have discussions or read about divine order and have some be in touch with those notions in a poetic fashion even 
Um, and yet, in their daily practice, in the operations of reason, say, in the marketplace or anywhere in the world, really, um, and not not live out their divine vocation to to live in a way in accord with the the higher higher reason. Um, and so, I guess what I was suggesting before was that it's a uh, you know that it's there's a sort of fractal like quality to the activity of reasoning. You know, some it, and it's it's a little bit time dependent on and subject dependent on whatever it is you wish to convey. But, you know, there are good watchmakers and bad watchmakers. There are good algebra teachers and bad algebra teachers. Whatever the, whatever the subject, whatever the thing being reasoned upon is, clearly it admits of degrees um, of those who are skilled. And so, and the, the, I guess I, I want to make a claim that the ones who are the better watchmakers, the, the better didacticians in, in any given field, are um, are those who, in some way, are living in the the light of the higher reason, and and why so? Because they are uh, they are being in the imago dei, being the image of God, and the act of creation, the act of 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 conveyance, of of education, of whatever it might be. They are imitating what God does for humanity. Um, either through the biblical story or through other operations of divine grace in the world. Um, what, is, what is God doing for humanity? Um, it's a what good question. What God for me lately? Well, God, <laughs> who knows? I don't know. Um, that's the problem. <laughs> what would Socrates say? Um, I don't know. I don't know that. I... No? You should. No. I should, you're right. What does Socrates um, say? What does the God do for humanity? He gives um, humanity a gift. He gives us he gives us reason. He gives us He gives us Socrates. Um, he gives us Socrates. He, he gives that us, is what you know, that God. is what God does for humanity. I mean, whether it's humanity or or or, or, or just yeah. Athens or you know, that's a different question, maybe, but that is what God gives people. Well, yeah, I mean, even even Christ, I mean, God coming there down. There you have out, it. Yeah. What does like, Christianity tell us? What right, does God I mean, give you? What does God give you? What does Christianity tell us? God gives you a crucified Messiah. He gives um, you. He gives you the hero. He gives you a hero, but yeah, but also a resurrected Messiah. He gives you a yeah. He gives you a hero. Yeah. Um, a, a, a hero. The meaning. Whose meaning, whose essence, whose the truth of whom is in God, is resurrected in God. He is not yeah. a mere mort, a mere mortal hero. He is a. Right. He, you're not going to be able to crush that hero. The hero. So what does the, the, the what does God give us? He gives us good people. Yeah. Good people are not. Um, Go, you're not going to be able to crush them. Yes, you can crush their body, but you will not be able to to crush the gift of God. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, what is the goal of reason? What is the goal of reason for the more the 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 human goal of reason? The human goal of reason is not the divine goal of reason. The human goal of reason is the ordering of our life yeah. into human form, human shape, uh, uh, right. uh, our surroundings, our own life, our room, as was the Peterson says, right, right. in your room. Well, you know, um, yeah. yes? Yes. And, and this yeah. starts from, and, you know, to relate this to painting, painting is that. Painting right. the ordering of this world, and it's, it's you show this a kind of a, an enlightening version because the world outside, the physical world, shall we say, is not very enlightening. I cannot see its ends. I look out at the horizon, I can't see it. It doesn't help me understand anything. But no. when I see the world within the as a painting, 
that I can see the whole thing of. And that can yeah. be enlightening, provided the painting is a good one. <laughs> yeah. So these two problems, yeah? Divine mm. reason is not for us as men. However, our reason is to be lived out in the light of divine reason, because this divine reason is none other than the perfection, the imminent, if you like, imminent at once and transcendent, but the essential perfection of reason, which is the only real ultimate limit of reason the rest is the passions you can deal with that yeah paul do you have a gun to shoot no no i'm well i mean so so there is a rest there is something that's that's not reason there are there is some kind of i mean i, I i'm not i, I Frankly, I can't follow what's going on here. I, I thought the question was uh, you know, something about the limits of, of reason. Then there, there seems to be, you know, there are, there are other domains, there are other things, but you know, I, I, I don't follow. I can't, I, I don't understand what, what, you're, what you're trying to explain to me. Well, you know, you have, People who think that there are certain aspects of our lives that are off limits for reason, because reason is this calculative machine you now that they it's want not, to it's not that they're, it's not that they're off limits. It's not that they're off limits. You know, like the the they're just there's just other other areas. You know, it's, it's well, 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 tell me what it is. I don't know the, the sensation. And, uh, and you and you and Okay, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, you know, and reason about that. Well, I, you know, there's, 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 there's processes of the mind that that uh, that aren't reasonable, and uh, you must. I mean, re re reason, reason isn't the same thing as consciousness, you know, or unless unless you're gonna define it that way. I mean, you can define anything. You like, I mean, sure, everything, is property. everything, everything is involved in consciousness, but there's there's consciousness of different kinds of things, and I mean, all right, I mean, you know, it depends how you, you know, ratiocination, language, and so on. That's you, but what, and, what, and, what do our what, classics what, say? What do our classics say? I'm not, we don't want to try to reinvent the wheel. The the general sense that we get from from our um, intelligent classics is that um, reason is the proper function of uh, the human being. The human being is, is um, human to the extent that he is rational. So we could say, and given the, the centrality of the human being in the cosmos, we could say that it's the, um, it is the foremost and proper um, and the original uh, activity of, well, what you call consciousness. Uh, so if no. there is um, if there is an excellence of consciousness, that is the rational consciousness. Okay. Um, now, ha, huh, that well, what does yeah. that mean though? Is it is it Richard Dawkins? I don't think so. <laughs> that's that's a farce. Is it uh, 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 the 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 reason uh, the the instrumental reason that Adorno would uh, would lash out at? I well, I mean, so. you know. I mean, look, Marco, you, you obviously have something that you want to communicate, and I'm willing to, to, to listen and try to understand. You know, I, I'm, I'm not... I know if I'm, I want, I'm not if I want to, but... <laughs> but um, is there something that is worthwhile saying? Is there something that is worthwhile opening up? Never mind what I want. Yeah. Well, huh? I mean, it, it just... It just, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it seems to me a, a fairly simple matter that there are, there are that there are aspects of life that um, that involve other things than than reason in in a way that's ordinarily understood. I mean, you know, well, most I, ordinary understood. Things. There's a lot of madness, but is that does that mean that reason should not intervene? Well, maybe reason should intervene, but I don't. 
it's not what one thinks of, uh, you know, the madness is a thing, is a thing that, that's going on. It's, you know, it's, and it's not, it's not particularly reasonable. But should not, where, where, where there's things that are not very reasonable, should, should reason not intervene well, to, okay, but then to govern? There, there, you know, then, then, then there's, you know, there, there's emotions that aren't necessarily reasonable, that things that occur to us, or there, there's- Should they not be made? Yes, okay, but should they there's, not- There's be fantasy, there's things that, you know, come in, and then, then all kinds of physical things. And ah, physical limitations. Not limitations, just experience. You know that that uh, that's. I mean, if you, if but if you're going to identify reason with consciousness, well, no, then, I didn't know, say consciousness. Works. I said is the is the the uh, the the excellence of the activity of. In other words, the there is consciousness um, that um, we could testify to in many ways. But the perfection of consciousness is reason. Perhaps, but there's other aspects of consciousness, like you know, heat and cold and things like that, which, you know, all right. I mean, if you want to define that as part of reason, okay. You know, I, I just you mean I'm the sensation using language, of heat? I'm using language in a fairly ordinary way. The, the, you mean the sensation of uh, of heat? Well, for instance, I mean different kinds of physical experiences, which no, there they are. No, there they are. There is Tired turmoil. Mostly. Sure, there is turmoil. There, there is. Um, well, that's not. It's not exactly turmoil. It's for the it's, passions. It's, what the passions? Well, the, the passions also. Passions also. No, but there's also uh, emotional states that aren't violent. You know, that, that, that are that are very tranquil or, or, you know, it's not necessarily some overwhelming. Um, uh, thunderous event, but just you know, a sensation or a feeling that, uh, that that one has in a given circumstance. That you know, but then there again, if you want to, if you want to call that part of reason, okay. But I, I, it just seems to me that there are there there are other realms and words that correspond to this. But I'm not, I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to argue against something. I just the, the question was about the limits of reason and these yes. are the things that come into my mind but right. you know you know if, if 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 you're going somewhere else and doing somewhere else i'm i'm very very happy to listen and learn you know it's not i'm not objecting i'm, I'm just you know just I, trying to answer very i wasn't thinking about to, what you were trying to do and I, I, I was trying to listen listen to what you were doing um now um when we say that there are sensations, that are aspects of our lives that are not humanly rational, um, you know, it's 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 not that they're not obvious. rational. It's just that they're what they are. You know, when you're like, you know, I'm sitting in front of the fire here, and my my, my feet are warm. You know, it's it's it, it, you know, okay, it's there. It is. I mean, it's it's doesn't seem, you know, it's 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 part of life. And uh, you know, I'm I'm having the visual experience that I'm having, and mm -hmm. and uh, I'm having an auditory experience, which is an aspect of mm -hmm. of this conversation okay. and trying to think about something. But it's also a sensation, which has its own its own thing. Consider and, the, and so, the consider this um, caricature that is often. Um, uh, presented of the Middle Ages as a closed system, where there's a cosmos, where you see these these visual representations sometimes of the of the medieval uh, universe. Everything yeah. is contained. Everything's finite. It's it's right there. You have the saints. You have everything is centered. There's a reason for everything. Everything is nicely and, and neatly ordered. Reason orders. Um, beautiful, but we also know that the medievals, while producing these images, were unpacking them in discussions, in their daily lives. They were very vibrant. They were laughing about them sometimes. It was great medieval humor. 
um, subtle very often, very subtle. So subtle that we, we hardly can detect it today. There is openness to what is not ordered. Recognition that there is barbarism. We have the caricature of the priest or the monk who is whipping himself because there are aspects of his life that don't accord with the divine order as he perceives it, as he imagines that it is, as he wishes that it be manifest to him. There is, however, the human dimension, the human activity of reason, which the medieval Christians would readily acknowledge to be independent in some way from the dictates of revelation. We have the pagan aspect. That's why they studied Aristotle and others, of course, because they recognized that there are human ends. What are these human ends of reason? To organize your life and to make it as rational as possible so that your all of your feelings, all of your emotions that are bound to the body are moderated and placed under the tutelage of the rational faculty, which is the perfection of consciousness. So all aspects of your life will be reasonable. I eat, it's reasonable. In other words, it is executed towards serving the rational, the perfection of consciousness as the, the rational faculty. I go poo, it's reasonable. And all activities of life, even in my sleep, I am reasonable. And as the medievals would say, you know, the, the saint, um, you know, has rational dreams. <laughs> so even his dreams will be affected by his character as a rational man. Do we have limitations? Sure, we're still bound to the body, but that is not the point because our goal as human beings is not to order our lives um, in the sense of excluding anything that is that falls short of reason. That's not the point. The point is not to turn ourselves into God. The point is to live as men who are rationis, um, you know, man is rationis capax, you know, he is, um, he is capable of, in other words, he is reasonable. So he can order his life and all aspects of his life in the light of the perfection of, of consciousness, which is reason. So he can open up all aspects of life to God, you could say. But in this case, in the medieval jargon, God is none other than perfecta ratio, the perfection of reason, which is the perfection of, the ultimate perfection of consciousness, the proper central activity the core activity of consciousness. At, at, its, at its core, its absolute center, consciousness is the governing faculty that governs everything. And there we go back to our previous question of the, the, the creatio. How do we understand this creation? Is it, is it ex nihilo or is it to be understood in terms of governing? So demiurgic. And there may be disagreements on that but I, I think that for one thing uh, Strauss uh, argued and invited us to appreciate uh, the 
what is today an unusual understanding of that creatio, of that creation. Suggesting that it's not unreasonable, in fact, to understand the biblical God as demiurge. Now, what does that mean? That's still an open question because you just invoked a term, a platonic term. It's still an open question. So we still are in need of understanding Plato. But uh, so we have these two ends. This is this is the um, um, the the point. I think uh, we don't need to have everything in the perfect place. That's never going to happen. But it's not a problem because that's not what we're here as human beings for. We're here to open up things to God. Autrement dit, we are there to uh, organize our lives in reasonable ways so that they have everything as a place. Okay, I have a dream. Okay, but it's in the light of the perfection. So all aspects and facets of my life are there for the rational faculty to be exercised to illuminate everything else. Does that make sense? Yes, I think, I think so. In a democracy, yeah. we have half of the votes. I'm just not sure what to add in the de uh, on top of it, um, anything. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It's definitely, it definitely has me thinking in a, in a fresh way. Well, we have one vote and one abstention, so that's well. I, I, I don't, I don't pretend to really be able to follow. Okay. So. All right. Um, but you know, this is um. This is not, I am not making anything up here. I am simply the spokesperson of what it's was- It's not about that, Marco. It's not about, yeah. it's not about pretending that you're being a fraud. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I don't- I, I wasn't being so cynical. I, I simply mean that I'm, I'm being the spokesperson, as it were, of something that is, um, that, that, that has been left under the rug for a long time, perhaps. Well, yeah. I mean, well, if, if we you, know, I mean, you know, uh, Fine. It's, a, it's an interesting thing to parallel, like you know, public safety against what you're talking about, um, because okay. the because the perfection of reason, the ordering of human life, involves the body in in ways that overlap with demands for public safety. You could say that um, yes, that there's, yes, that there's there's this there's this interesting sort of slice of overlap with things related to health. And wellness, yes. yes, and use of substances that, on the one hand, are purely medicinal; on the other hand, might have some kind of sur superfluous seeming euphoric effect, right? That you know, the legaliz legalization or normalization of medical marijuana being a key point, um, where you have, on the one hand, th something toted as something for your well-being, a cure to your anxiety, um, but but sort of being this. Uh, this is also this addiction that that is that's deeply tied into the passions of men, ways in which people, you know, I, I feel like no one can really go to bed at night until they have derived some sap of meaning from their day. Of what? Uh, some some kind of meager droplet of of meaning, even even if it's meaning. derived from something as you know something like a show. Or, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about why people um, gorge themselves on stories or why people right. imbibe the kind of entertainment that they, enter, that they entertain, right? The, the sort of wish fulfillment, vicarious living, you know, your life might be a, you know, more or less ordered, but messy in ways that you don't want to think about at day's end. And so you plug into a fictional narrative in which things work out, or even if they don't work out, they, they don't work out in a way that somehow gratifies you, mm -hmm. that, you know, that there, there's, there's a sort of pornographic aspect to mainstream entertainment, 
really. And, you know, pornography, you could say, is the ultimate entertainment. Um, and that it's the perfect kind of wish fulfillment, right? There you are. I'm having sex with a beautiful woman, and only it's not me. And similarly with like spy narratives or, you know, whatever kind of stories people might indulge in, there is this quest to find the me. In other words, this well, the, to get back. Prostitution of life. Right. Pornos is, is, the, is the whore. So we, right. we have the the, um, the experience. The, there's this um, satanic in, in uh, to, to refer to uh, Dante's Inferno, you know, uh, determination. We have flattened uh, uh, the experience uh, the, of, of, of life, yes. We have flattened mm. it and, uh, to a dead shadow. And, yeah. and that is yeah. vulgarizing. Yeah. That is, that is the, the prostitution of life for yes. nothing. Selling what right. is meaningful for what is meaningless. So yeah. you're trashing it, meaning and you're saying, okay, I'll retain the vestiges of life, but now they're devoid of all meaning. Right. See, there's I mean, no openness to question, no transcendence, zero. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking it's an interesting vector of critique, like yeah. to, to critique public, public, the public safety replacing the common good, to critique that development. It's just an interesting vector to choose, you know, mainstream entertainment, to, to choose something, something like media criticism. Um, as as one of you know, perhaps multiple vectors to to get at the essence of of what is taking place in the modern situation, because with quarantine, right, all these mandates, quarantine, people plugging into the internet, plugging into their phones, plugging yeah, into all is, these. Is, is, yes, you're right. You're right in uh, highlighting these aspects. These these are manifestations or aspects of uh, you said speak about the essence of, of the modern. Um, here we have to have to click onto this. Um, the essence of secularism, you could say. And the essence of secularism yeah. is closure to transcendence. So there is this flattening, you know, the one what is it, the Marcuse, you know, the, the one-dimensional man. Uh, this flattening out, this dying out of uh, of uh, experience of life. Yeah. It's a life filled with death in, in the conventional sense of the terms. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I think like acting has declined as an art form um, within my lifetime. I've noticed, I've just noticed it by and large, act, actors aren't as good at acting as they used to be. And I think it has to do with this same operation that, you know, insofar as our life experience becomes impoverished, we can't. We can't even entertain ourselves after a while, and so no meaning. Entertainment here means the prostitution of life to the point where everything is has to be. There's this kind of imp, this imperative. It's a new morality. Eh? The imperative of um, living meaninglessly. Yeah, you have to right. get rid of meaning, and you got rid of them from the schools because there's zero question of why. The question, the why question, is out. It's anathema in schools. Yeah, you got rid of traditional, all kind of traditional morality. Of course, uh, meaning is out. And so, what are people entertained by? Absolutely meaningless things. Shows that are absolutely meaningless. Humor that is meaningless. And the ultimate uh, image of meaninglessness, of course, of, is the the rape of intimacy because meaning is intimacy. There is, yeah. there, is, there is meaning only in intimacy. And of course, the, the supreme intimacy is the intimacy of the mind. What else is there? Um, now, the, the obscurantism at its, in the most vicious and cruel and, and um, ugly uh, form is shape is what you refer to as the, the pornographic uh, scene, which is not to be understood, I think, in a narrow sense of, okay, there is an image there, uh, but it's the, uh, the trashing of meaning, the yeah. trashing of meaning, the, the, the extrapolation, the raping of life, you're just yeah, taking so... something, but what do you have? It's only an image. 
Right. right, like pornography is the only the most acute example where you take the intimate. But everything is pornographic. The news but is like, pornographic. Everything but is exactly. pornographic. Anything, yeah, the, like the you know, calling something obscene, even when it's not speaking of sexual obscenity, to speak of the obscenity of life, the uh, obscenity of yeah, of of yeah, of, of presenting an outer shell of what a hero really like presenting. This is a hero. He wears a cape. You know, he goes rights wrongs. But losing all the while what the heroic actually is. Okay, but that's only yes, that's on on the way. Right. It's midway. But you want to reduce that and say that actually he's not a hero at all. He is right. a bisexual. Uh, this and that. He is on trans. He's transitioning. Superman is transitioning, and <laughs> he's on drugs and he has problems with alcohol and he had pedophilia. So you're turning him into a, a, a psychotic freak. So you right. have to demolish him. And of course, however, however, he is super strong. He has all the powers, but, but he is spiritually, morally dead. Right. He's a zombie. So we have today on TV and all this other garbage that people see on the screens, we have zombies. What is a zombie? Outside, flesh, inside, dead. Yeah. That's what we have. And they're doing that yeah. also to Superman, as I understand. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Any, anything that, that strikes a chord of genuine humanity. <laughs> Destroy. Yeah. Destroy right. that. That's the enemy mm -hmm. of the regime. Humanity, yeah. we should not forget, is the enemy of the regime, of the satanic yeah. regime. And what, yeah. how else are you going to call it? Anything that can remind us of, of, of humanity, yes? Yeah, right. Well, that's, that's why, yeah, that's why, I, I mean, I described it as painful almost for me to read Henry James because- That's why we need this. Yeah, it's just Take like, oh. Just, because yeah. everything that can, you know, cover your mm -hmm. mouth because laughter too reminds you of humanity. It does, yeah. That's bad. Yeah, there, <laughs> there was an old episode of Candid Camera where a guy was just sitting on a park bench reading a joke book and laughing a lot, and people edged away from him. They were suspicious of him, paranoid. You know, why is this man laughing? <laughs> it's like we we get we get used to this mode when we tra when we travel on public trains or buses or or walk down a street full of pedestrians, where one almost feels obligated to put on a, a, a mean face. And of course, you know the mask makes the face sort of incidental. So th then you have no face at all, and you're just you know, your bug eyes. Where oh, the eyes are just there to indicate where people are looking. So that you know, you make sure. <laughs> but, but you must also understand that the viruses can come through the eyes too. So soon they will have some kind of covering for the eyes as well. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, eventually we'll just walk around in, in giant like insectoid uh, floats, like a, like the Saint Patty's Day parade. And, we'll... <laughs> and again, why walk if you can just stay home and vegetate and get with a with a tube yeah. stuck inside your head? To suck right. out all the juice. Maybe the but you could drive a remote car, maybe, and crash into the last remaining humans. Okay, right. Um, so we live in a wonderful um, era here. <laughs> well, and I'm sure you you appreciate it. Um, but um, uh, it's what I call it's what I it's what I call the white box. The white a, box. Yeah, there's the in pipe and out pipe and a screen in there, and That's you're just us. in there. That's us. We're the white boxes. Um, the black so, box. So, it, 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 to bring this back uh, home to the to the um, the question of uh, what Strauss is up to when he speaks about a second cave, um, here we would have the consummation of the blueprint. For the second cave. You know that um, Machiavelli is, well, you, know, you hear very often, yes, that he is speaking about the introduction of new ways and uh, new orders. Nuovi modi e ordini. What does he mean by that? More or less, you get an idea. He wants to restructure 
society, the world. But this also pertains to what is crucial about human life, namely reason or logos. There's a new way of speaking, new ways of speaking, and uh, new ways to order words, to orient speech. So there are new ends, because order presupposes end. New ends and new ways of speaking. These are essential to the constitution of the new world. And here, that world is unraveling. So there you have it, uh, this um, second cave is not just a blueprint, we're in the blueprint. The, the whole point was for us to jump into it, for us to be driven into it to be sucked into it, suckers. What, what, what is it? It is this world in which um, everything is mediated by um, a false uh, frame. Well, uh, wouldn't that just be, the, wouldn't that be the shadows on the wall? No. I mean, I'll, I'll have to, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've got the book, enough. so. Ah, uh, uh, uh huh. Okay. But, so I, you know. No, well, the shadows on the wall would be the ordinary, um, the only ordinary experience of life where people are faced with authority. This is something else. This is authority, which has, and platonically speaking, it has um, is, is um, uh, rooted in truth. There is a there is a heart of truth, a, you know. There's a there's a center of authority which which is open to um, you could say you know to to truth. Um, now, in this case, you have a an authority that is established as a contrivance. Uh, so it is reason that establishes authority. I mean, by that I mean this sophistic reason. So the sophist now comes onto the scene and he says, I'm going to establish a fake authority. And this authority, call it history, call it, you know, the evolutionary system in which we live, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, this fake authority that is uh, supervised by the new experts who will tell you all about it, uh, provided you pay enough, um, this new authority is um, the boundary of our new world in which it's a pornographic world. Um, the, the, there is a world, in other words, a world that is uh, bereft of all reference to meaning. Meaning is dead. We live in an absolutely meaningless world. Um, and you could also say to speak with Nietzsche, that the boundaries of our universe are marked by the death of God. Yeah. Uh, the boundaries of the previous cave were marked by God. In our new cave, a cave within the, within the cave, um, you know, the boundary is the absence of meaning. Yeah. This is the second cave. Welcome to the party. <laughs> I wrote a little haiku that springs to mind <laughs> uh, about the, cic the cicada. It goes, uh, cicada is swelling in the thick, sticky air. The birds mm -hmm. never used to sing like that over there. You know, the cicada being this, uh, you know, this insect that buries into the earth and emerges every seven years to copulate and die, being a kind of metaphor perhaps for modern men. And we, <clears throat> here in our enclosures and our domestiles and our automobiles, buried as it were, emerging to, you know, explode in passionate death pangs of pornographic ecstasy and return to the The, the, the second cave is still a cave. Sure, it's a cave within the cave. 
a bubble within the bubble, an illusion within your illusion. You are at a further removal from reality. They have created, um, you know, um, a world that takes into account the outside world and tries to synthesize Plato and his enemies. Well, Plato is on the on the on the on the still set up by the enemies. Well, something like that. I I, I can't follow that. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the you material, know. material, material, the classical I mean, Strauss would you know, emphasize, I think, too, uh, you know, ma ma idealism on a materialist basis. This is what it means. So God is brought in to the picture within the context of the absence of God. Right. <clears throat> yeah? That's that. Does that resonate in your experience? Do do you see that? I don't know what you mean. Well, we go to church and we pray God, knowing quite well that there is no such thing outside of the church. Well, some of us, some people, maybe. I know, but uh, we can pretend. We can, everybody has a subculture too, as they those <laughs> those, those zombies would say, um, you know, but. There is a yeah. context well, for that. Church attendance is not church attendance is not really tethered all that much to genuine intimate bonds between people and families. Uh, it's and the and religious authority is you know it doesn't. I, I mean, maybe you remember a sermon or something like that in the workplace. I, I don't mean other than yes. that. There's, uh, yes, I, I, well, I, I'm, I'm tempted to say, speak for yourself. No, I, right, I, uh, right, right. No, but no, he's speaking for the for the world in general. In general, in general, this is what is what has happened. This doesn't mean that uh, it has been eradicated. That there's no trace of the first cave. Obviously, there are traces, but we're working hard to get rid of them. That's all. Yeah, right. Well, they yeah, remain I mean, as there fetishes. Are, there are vestiges, for, and there's there's That's genuine, true. and there's genuine, you know, religion and spirituality and so on, but. Yeah, but just but all of the all of the intervening elements of of the modern situation the there, car the the phone the i don't know <laughs> you know these things these things detract well because you know with tech, with technological assistance at every at every corner you you never really have to rely on others in a way, in a way that you may, might have if you didn't have you know all these modern day conveniences I, I don't take technology. I mean, I take it seriously, but I don't take it that seriously. I'm not, say, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying, I'm saying like just in general, like for everybody. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm not talking personally. I, you know, obviously people are caught up in technology, but it's it's just it's just power. You know, it's it's just well, meaningless it's also, power. It's also freedom. It's also freedom from um, on the one hand being responsible for others, and on the other hand, um, oh, you know, that, that, that's also. But, ever, kind but, ever, of power, but the key yeah. point is, ever you don't need to feel you don't need to feel like other people need you don't need to feel in a in a, uh, in a state of that, that's, um, gratitude you know, towards others for. It's, it's you don't need, like to, you don't need to get rides if everyone has a car. You know, you don't need to borrow a cup of sugar. Well, it's 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 a glass you know, of milk have, from everyone, your neighbor. Everyone's a corrupt aristocrat. You know, they're, they're, you know, it's it's there's there's a there's a difference of scale, but I don't think that there's a a, a difference of um, you know a, a, of essence. There's a lot more. Between it's, it's what and if, what? Well, there, it's as if everybody's suddenly a corrupt aristocrat because there's all this power. That's what technology does. So it's it used to be that there was only a few people who could have those attitudes and behave that way and now you have an awful lot of people technology and, is not empowering at all that is that is well, that's a, an illusion it's a, certain kind, it's a certain kind of power it's a yeah, certain kind of technology power. the goal of technology is not to empower anyone the oh, goal yeah, of technology okay. is to empower itself by using people People well, are okay. into it. All right, all right. Th th that's something else. But you know, okay. You it's know. just a. It's you know this um this all this uh, etching of the the um, 
the, the, the big fish, well, the little fish are the bait for the big fish um, by, uh, um, well, Bruegel um, and, and others, because it was pretty common at the time. Uh, and the idea here is that you are given the, um, the bait, okay? You have the illusion of getting power in this case to bring it back to what you said. You have the illusion of gaining something that makes you more powerful. But as you do that, you don't know that there is the fisherman with his big knife that is ready to cut you. Oh, well, you know, okay. I mean, the, the so he's going to eat you. Well, okay. There's, there's there's different ways of putting it, but you know that's what's happening. Well, look know, at okay. the kids. Look at the kids with the computer. They think they're empowered because they see all this bullshit on yeah, the computer. I, I, Marco, I, I, I know what you're saying. Kids. They're being used. I, I know what you're saying, but you know this technology. It's it's going to fall apart very quickly at this point. It's they're they're not going to be able to sustain it. What? Why not? Because of the they're they're in in their. In their, in their power madness, they're going to, they are clamping down on human freedom. So and what? The, the what? So what? They're clamping down. Freedom is the ultimate enemy here because freedom is meaningless. People still haven't realized that their, their so-called freedom, or what they've been used to uh, calling freedom, is absolutely meaningless. Well, m maybe. They're ready to trade the, it off the, for absolute slavery. Well, m maybe, Marco, but the, but the reason there's... Like, the reason there's technology in the world is because of uh, of freedom, however you want to define it, for for people to do different things. You know, it. it That's it's not why technology is there. Technology is there is a modern phenomenon that is there to reshape the ends of the human being and to turn the human being into a vegetable, frankly, or or an android, if you like. Or replace the human being with an android and you oh, it's, 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 coming, it's coming to that but i i wouldn't say you know i i don't want to get into a right well but that's uh, that's that's, that's a, i think a point that that um we have uh, raised in the past in other words uh, and, and i think that that it from what i heard from you technology technology you doesn't do, the, the it doesn't nature do of technology. anything it's, it's 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 intentions that do things the technology is a consequence and it has consequences and and it's 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 a factor in, in this world where they're going to you know they're going to turn everything into a a programmable cyborg but but it it's a certain kind of human power, which, 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 as it's such, not techne. it's not techne. Technique is one thing. Technique is one thing. I, I, I can did, build I, my I house. Say it was, I didn't. I didn't say it's techne. It's not, it, but it is a certain kind of power. If you have a bulldozer, you can dig a bigger hole faster. It's just. I'm, I'm saying something very, very simple. Yeah, and, but that's and now. Not, um, we, we, yeah, we, I, you know, I, I'm not sure what we are what we're arguing about here. Oh, uh, the I'm difference human. between I, art and and making things. I, I have a hammer, okay, but then something happens. You have technology. Techno and now, of course, usually if you go to school, they will teach you. We have a we have had an evolution of technology from the from the Neanderthal to uh, to our day. That's a bunch of nonsense. Um, they've had. Uh, throughout well, are, 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 are you suggesting that technology itself is doing something it's technology is, is a function of human activity and, it's not a function and, of a and, human and, activity and, and it's the, the product uh, no and it, are, are the, the the it's 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 a political evolution that has that has given rise to 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 to, to this this uh, blossoming of, of of science and technology, and and, and it's, it's, it's I that don't see it as a blossoming; it's the unfolding of a monster. Well, okay, unfolding. Call it what you will. This this, this you know this 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 sludge uh, drop. Yes, we'll call yes. it what you call it what you like. I mean, yes. you know, yes, yes. You know, if we're, if we're going to argue about every word, it's not interesting. No, it's not a question of uh, um, you know s s syntax. Um, it is a question of of telos. 
in, it, there is no evolution here in ordinary in the ordinary sense of the no, term. I'm not evolution, Marco. Come on, every if every word is going to be a problem. It's just not interesting. I mean, things have changed. Things have changed. Call it evolution. Call it devolution. There's call been it a break. Death. Call it what you like. There's a change that's going on. This change came about. The, the, the reason there's so much technology is because science became unleashed and science became unleashed because of political changes. And those political changes are based on philosophical changes. Call it evolution, call it what you want. I mean, this is, this is Strauss 101. And, 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 and this, this technology, uh, you know, it's, you know, you, it's, it's, it's physical power is what it is. And physical power has absolutely no meaning except that it, 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 it has an influence and the moral result is to turn absolutely or practically everyone, practically everyone into what, what used to be these corrupt aristocrats who get to oh, do whatever I, I they want. I would disagree with this. I would disagree with this completely, completely, completely. This is not the goal. The goal I'm is not, not I'm that. not saying a goal. I never mentioned any goal. Oh, well, well goal, there is a goal. A goal implies well, somebody with a plan. Well, I, I never talked about anybody having any kind of a plan. Well, I do think I there just, was a plan. I just, but, uh, I, I, just described, I just described what I understand Strauss explaining, you know, this, this, this is my understanding of what Strauss is telling us about our, uh, about our situation. But he doesn't end up with these folks who are old, uh, corrupt aristocrats, empowered people. He ends up with the last men, which are- well, The last man, is, the last man is, what, is, is a corrupt aristocrat, somebody who can do whatever they want without consequences and yeah, has but, no, you know, but, and has no the, moral compass. But, the, that, but the, that, yeah, that, well, there, there's a moral degradation in both cases. But with the aristocrat, I mean, he he had certain. You know, that's what I mean. He, I, you know, I mean well, these uh, these 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 uh, these, uh, these late yeah. ancient regime the people in in Versailles that had all this money and they could you know they could uh, uh, they could do whatever well, sure, they wanted but, with chickens and but, and, but, and so on and they could uh, commit murder and get away with it and do all this uh, waste their time. Yes. And in that <laughs> sense, that's what I mean by, you know, I, I don't very... mean, I don't mean the Sid when I say an aristocrat, I, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, the, the, these, these decadent sure. people. And so now we, because of all this power, we, we now, uh, the, the, the world is populated by, by what, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of unimaginable, but, but you know, where before 95% of everyone was a peasant who had to uh, be up against the realities of the world. Now, 95% of the world's population are, are, are like the, the, the worst, most irresponsible, corrupt aristocrat from uh, the late French 18th century. Well, I, I don't know about 95% of the population of Africa, but... Asia, South America. They don't, they're not exactly... Well, you know, yeah, but Marco, come on. Okay. Uh, understand what well, I'm saying. A little, bit of are a little bit strange. You know, obviously, there's people who aren't, who aren't part of it. And there's even people in the West who aren't part of it. And there's even people who use a lot of technology who aren't part of it. Yes, but, but this is not the... You know, you know, we're 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 in it. We're in a situation where before there were like three percent of the population was this, and now we've got a great big more than fifty percent uh, population that that is in the 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 essential uh, uh, moral state of, of that three percent uh, corrupt aristocracy of the French eighteenth century. I I I still would not go along with that. In so far no, that's as that's fine. That's fine. In so far you as know. they were more uh, in tune with. Uh, well, okay, you know, maybe they were better, right? You know, I just, you know, I'm. I'm well, just... well, well, on what grounds? Uh, uh, on the ground. Well, all right. You know, I mean, make all those distinctions. I'm just, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just reacting to what we were saying. I'm not right, trying right. to argue. Would you? Anything. Would you not it's say? Like, I'm not trying to argue. It's, uh, <laughs> would you not say, however, that these Th those um, uh, those corrupt folks were more in line with Marquis de Sade. Um, I would. I don't know. It, it seems like Marquis de Sade would be a pretty good uh, a pretty good way to understand what you know all these transgender uh, uh, blah 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 people. I mean, it's you know, it's like uh, uh, your pleasure. Your pleasure. Is what the I star. see. You are right. What I see here is, however, 
is the promise, you could say, of allowing everybody to become a little Marquis de Sade, but this promise is a bait. What is in reality taking place is the turning, uh, the, to the conversion of everybody into little vegetables. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, you know, obviously, obviously, I mean, there, you know, being, being, being a little Marquis de Sade is, you know, okay, call it being a vegetable, uh, you know, absolutely. I know, because Marquis de Sade is, is actually has this this thrill. He he's engaging in something. Okay, Marco, but you know, you know, you know, it's uh, okay. You know, you can make all the distinctions. I mean, I agree. I agree with you. You know, it's 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 pathetic. Obviously, the Marquis de Sade is a, you know much more of a person, as horrible as he is, than you know some thirteen year old girl who thinks she's a, a you know a, a giraffe and uh, and hates but her most, parents. And, most you know, importantly, uh, you know. however, most importantly, nobody is making use of Marquis de Sade. Here, well, all these little, oh, here, all these vegetables are fueling the system, which is the technological system. This is the well, key. you know, but 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 the, the Marquis de Sade can can be one thing in the 18th century, and but now that 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 everyone can can indulge what what the Marquis de Sade was essentially indulging, you know, it's there's an effect of numbers and of and of weight that that, that changes the situation. That's not now what every, I think every, changes the situation. I think that it, it is strategic. It's an industry of people who are fed a promise. Okay, a promise of, of uh, debauchery, um, and that promise becomes the bait to uh, fuel the machine. Well, all right, but it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of, well, okay, okay, be, you know, it's it, it's being exploited. It's a it's a yes. you know, it's, it's like a it, that's it's, the whole point. It, it's a thing, but you know, when, when you have one Marquis de Sade, it's 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 one thing. It, it doesn't. You know, it's it's not it's like a snowball. It's it, Marquis de, de Sade is like a snowflake, and this thing is now it's like snowball. I would say I, it's not what? accidental. It is programmatic. Well, I, all right. I mean, okay, but I mean, I would say. <laughs> people people are making money, and they're so glad to be making money, and they 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 do more of it, and they they congratulate themselves. You know, the the, the thing. The thing has the there's all sorts of reasons for, for the thing to perpetuate itself, and meanwhile, intellectually. Uh, the you know the, the 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 new global aristocracy you know is congratulating themselves and they want to perpetuate their thing and they they give themselves good reasons for doing it and they exploit the thing as much as they can well sure and 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 we're in this crazy situation and it's going to it's going to end with blood and we're we're quick we're quickly going towards a, a bloody situation okay well uh this is uh, I, I would, you know, whatever the nuances of our descriptions uh, may be. Uh, this, I, I think, is the uh, co the the coming of age of the um, the blueprint, and uh, thus of the second cave. This is what well, a, blue, a, bl a, a, a blueprint. So you think there's an author of the blueprint? Oh, clearly. All right, and who would that be? Well, Machiavelli. Uh, Strauss identifies Machiavelli as the father of modernity, and to that extent, Machiavelli. Uh, now, this has gone. This is. Um, you could say that this went um, um, beyond the. Uh, yeah, I, 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 Machiavelli. I mean, okay, I, I agree. He's. No, no. Uh, this he, is. He's. He, He's guilty, but you know he didn't foresee this. I mean, he was looking. He was looking towards peace and prosperity, right? You know, and and, so you and he, was being, he was being irresponsible. And okay, he, he's he's at fault, but it's I mean it's beyond anything that he dreamed of. Yes, clearly, clearly. But um, then um, th there we have um, a blueprint now. What is the blueprint to achieve? Um, there is something, if you look at Thoughts of Machiavelli, yeah, there is something that touches on this scenario uh, towards the end, where we're, we're speaking about 
uh, something satanic. I mean, Strauss refers to this. Uh, and we're not going to investigate this thoroughly. There's no, we have no time, of course, here. Uh, but there's something satanic about it. That same principle uh, would allow us to, to say that there is a facade where, and Strauss highlights this point, the patriotism, the uh, invoking of, um, you know, liberty and, the, and all these beautiful things serve as a mask for what we, what we could say um, uh, kind of satanic uh, impulse, which we would find also in Marquis de Sade. To what extent is the world for Machiavelli expendable for his pursuits? It comes to the point where, yes, I mean, could he have foreseen the dynamics, uh, you know, in, in detail? Nah, nah, the image, he would not have imagined all these you know, modes of madness. On the other hand, you could say that there is something that is of the essence that he would have, and he could have foreseen. You, you don't have to convince me of the evil of Machiavelli. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're preaching to the choir, Mark. Yeah, Tom. yeah, yeah, okay, no, but more than that, the question, I don't, I mean, I think you had great things going for it, but, um, about not, it's not a, an adominum situation here, huh? I'm not trying uh, a to what? A, a what? A dominum. Um, I'm not attacking the person, the man, but it oh. is a project. And the project involves a sp specific unraveling. where you, you could draw a line from Machiavelli to Nietzsche, for example, yeah? A straight well, line. Well, a Stra a Strauss does. Yeah. And, I, and I'll, I'll go along with it. Yeah. But from Nietzsche to this avalanche, the avalanche, if we are to embrace this amor fati, this, this uh, love of, of this fateful destiny, yeah. of this love of the universe manifesting the absence of, of God, then all of this follows, not as an addition, but as an unpacking. And at this point, uh, the human being must enter into the blueprint. He must turn into fuel for the making of a new world. Well, you, you, mean, you, you mean everybody has to become a cyborg? Well, fuel for the rise of a new era of androids or whatnot. Symbols of cyborgs. Yeah, well, the only thing is that there is no integration of, of con human consciousness in these things. It, well, it's, it, 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 yeah, getting, that's, I mean, the cyborg. It is a pornographic world in which consciousness is, is um, eradicated. Well, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. No, the, the, the cyborg is, uh, the, the man becomes a machine. You know, consciousness stops. It's just uh, okay. It's just you know, uh, there's various definitions of cyborgs, but yeah, they could. Some would say that they're integrating consciousness in the. You know, you have well, it's uh, at some level. You know, the, the, yeah. the, there'll be some kind of experience, but there, there will no longer be what shall we say, moral agency. But the, the thing is, the thing is that that moral agency or. Uh, you know the conscience in the in the in the uh, in the in the true sense of the word, it can't be eliminated. So that you'd have so to eliminate that, people. Well, yeah, right. And and they they they, I would say that they want to destroy all people. 
and they talk about that, you know, you know, yeah. changing the DNA, you know, they, they but they, they can't do that. I mean, they can kill everybody. Yeah. But they, they, they can't destroy what human beings are. And, Clearly. and, and, and this, you know, this is... No, the, the, the second best would be to cripple them. Well, they're, they're, you know, people are, are people are particularly crippled, but pe in, in, in another way, you can say that people are always crippled. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to suggest that our situation now isn't a particular kind of dire. But if you you know, you, you, you can look at other situations in recent history, which were also which were in some ways even more dire. So there's a we're in a situation that's a very special kind of dire. What's that? And I, what's this? Well, I mean, if you were living, if you were living in France in uh, 1917, or if you were living in Russia in uh, 1925, you know, the, the, there there were times. If you're living in Cambodia in the in the 70s, there there were times and places when the murderousness got totally out of hand, and millions were millions were slaughtered. Yes, but it, 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 there is an awareness of a problem. No, I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's the same. I'm. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, the, the the worst. You 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 can't eliminate the human spirit. You can try to do it, and they they they're always trying to do it. And now there's a worldwide attempt to eliminate the human spirit, and it will um, it will go through a phase. Now I'm convinced of elimination of bodies with killing, but. You know, it, and and God knows what's going to happen, and God knows what will be the fate of humanity uh, in this next century or many centuries. But the human spirit cannot be eliminated, and, and so we're we're being tried. It's a you know, this is a, it's a very we we've gone through. A, through your life and my lifetime has been a time for us where we've been living of great somnolence and, and incredible self-indulgence as a result of that somnolence. And, and, and now we're, we're re-entering the, 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 sort of, the sort of problems that people have had all, all through history. And it's gonna come down on us very, very hard. And this is, to me, What's going on now is just the beginning. It's going to get really, I mean, it's so much, you know, it, very difficult to imagine two years ago that we'd be here and, and things just keep getting worse. And now in the Netherlands, they're, they're starting to shoot people. And, and that's going to generalize. You know, and, uh, And I, you know, I mentioned uh, I mentioned about Florida. You're, you're probably in the what is it, the best place in the world right now? The best place in the civilized world. Maybe if you were living in Greenland, it would be, you'd be better off. But but you're probably in the best place in the whole civilized world. And that depends on you know you could say one man or a very small group of people. It's 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 quite it's quite fragile. I chose to be here. Well, it was it was it was a good choice. I mean, it was a good tactical choice. I'm a rational man, right? Uh, unlike me. 